This podcast is focusing on providing you with some additional support to complete your lesson plan observation. In this observation, it's a little unusual. We're asking you to sit through an entire lesson given by your mentor teacher, and as the lesson progresses, we're asking you to try to reconstruct that lesson and complete the, session, the sections of this lesson planning template to reflect what you're observing. Some of the areas of the template you might need to check with your mentor either beforehand or afterwards what, um, for example, the title of the lesson is and what the topic and the focus is. You should know the class size and the year level and the duration of the lesson will become self-evident. So I wanted to run through the various sections of this template to try and familiarise you with um, its jargon, its technical language, um, and what some of these areas might mean. We're going to start with the learning intentions, where any good lesson should start. What are these? Well, they're also referred to as learning objectives or learning goals or learning aims or who knows. Different schools will use different language to describe these things, but at their heart, they simply refer to what you as the teacher want your students to be able to do, to know, or to understand at the end of this lesson that they don't already know, don't understand, or can't already do. The curriculum will guide you to a certain extent as to what the learning intentions might be, and I'll talk about the curriculum in a few minutes. But your starting point for your learning intentions is always your students. You are teaching the students, not the curriculum. Curriculums are, curricula are only ever a guide. Your starting point is always with your students. What do they already know? What can they already do? What do they already understand? Where do you want to take them on their learning journey? How far along their learning continuum do you want to move them? So that's the learning intentions. Let's move now to the curriculum. In Victoria, this is called Ausvels, and I'm kind of hoping that you've been introduced to Ausvels either in your methods, if you're a secondary pre-service teacher, or in some of your discipline-based courses, if you are a primary pre-service teacher. But in a nutshell, Ausvels is a mashup of some areas of the Australian curriculum and some of the areas of the old Victorian Essential Learning Standards curriculum, which was in place prior to the emergence of the Australian curriculum. Ausvels is divided into four areas. There are three strands. Discipline-based learning is one of those. In discipline-based learning, you'll have English, mathematics, science, and so on. Um, one other strand is interdisciplinary learning, which might include digital technologies, it might include thinking, creativity, and a few other things, communication. And the third strand is the personal and interpersonal learning strand. Each strand has a series of domains, and within each domain you might have a few different dimensions. And sometimes those dimensions are elaborated even further into standards or elaborations. You need to become familiar with Ausvels. You need to be particularly familiar with the relevant curriculum areas for the year levels and disciplines you are teaching. For primary school pre-service teachers, that means you need to have quite a broad knowledge across all the strands and the domains for the year level that you are teaching, but not just your year level. In any class, primary or secondary, you will have students in that class who are operating at levels above and below the expected level. So you may have to be familiar with the strands, domains, dimensions and elaborations across four different levels if you're in a secondary classroom. Likewise with a primary classroom. Uh, so become familiar. You also need to demonstrate in your lesson plans how your activities link. So you need to identify the areas of the curriculum that this lesson is targeting. Try not to target too many in any one lesson. It becomes meaningless when you do that. Now 
let's move now to assessment strategies. And some of you might be asking, but isn't the assessment the last thing that you do? It might be the last thing you do, but it's one of the very first things that you think about. You've used the curriculum and your knowledge of your students to identify the learning intentions. You've identified which areas of the curriculum you're going to be uh, focusing your students' work on. My question to you then is, how will you know if your students have met the intentions that you have set? And this is where assessment comes in. You need to be able to define from the outset how you plan on making sure or assessing whether your students have achieved the learning intentions that you set. Will you run a test? I think that's one of the most boring ways of assessing learning and you can be much, much, much more creative than that in ways and assess students in ways that engage them more than a test does, although there is sometimes room for tests. Will you observe their learning? One of the most common um, assessment strategies that primary school teachers in particular use is observation. But how will you record and remember what you've seen on each student? So some of you might like to ask your mentors how they keep track of the things that they're observing. Will you get them to peer assess or self-assess? Is the learning activity itself a form of assessment? Will you get them to do a worksheet? Please, please, please tell me that you won't. The number one thing that children dislike about school is worksheets. They want to do something that's more hands-on, that's more authentic, that's more meaningful and more engaging. So be a little bit more creative in thinking beyond the worksheet. Think about the terminology you've been exposed to, or I'm hoping you've been exposed to, assessment of learning, assessment as learning, and assessment for learning. So try and work out when you're observing this lesson, how is your mentor teacher assessing whether the students have met the learning intentions. The next section, resources and materials, fairly self-explanatory, list the sorts of resources and materials the teacher has been using. Has there been a handout? Are there textbooks involved? Are there manipulatives or objects that are being used? Are there other resources that are being called into action? One of the not one of the worst things, but one of the things that you should try and avoid at all costs is trying to scurry around during a lesson for the materials that you need. The spare pencils, the textures, the paper, the books, the handouts, get them all prepared beforehand. Next section is digital technology integration. What has your mentor teacher used uh, in the way of digital technology in this particular lesson, if any? List the URLs that they might have been using or any apps or programs or devices that have been used. Let's scroll down. Let's move now to the body of the lesson. Each lesson has three, preferably four main sections and they vary in time. So see if you can keep a track of approximately the time spent on each stage of the lesson. The lesson always starts with an introduction what I want you to do is to observe what is the teacher doing during this time and what is the student being asked to do at this time. For example, in an introduction, are the students seated on a floor mat listening to the teacher's instructions? Or are they seated at their desks? Are they being asked to do something? What is the teacher doing? Is the teacher talking at the students, explaining the lesson? perhaps outlining the learning intention. Maybe the students are being asked to read out the learning intentions. Is a video being shown? Is the teacher asking questions to check for prior learning? Are they making links to previous lessons, for example? What is the teacher doing to engage the students into the lesson or the topic? Are they using something that's far more imaginative and creative that you can capture in your lesson plan? In the body of the lesson, what is the teacher doing? Are they giving instructions? What instructions? List them down. So try and identify the things, the specific things that the teacher is doing at each stage of the lesson. 
Is the teacher modelling what needs to be done? How does the teacher then guide the student's learning? Does the teacher need to direct students to learning centres or to move into small groups, for example? Is the teacher roving the class during this time to check on and support individual students or small groups of students? Is the teacher asking questions at this point? What sort of questions? A well-prepared lesson plan for a beginning teacher would list the sorts of questions that he or she would anticipate wanting to ask as a way of checking for understanding or extending the student's thinking. So if you can, identify what those questions are that your mentor teacher is asking during the lesson that are related to the learning, not necessarily related to behaviour. Does the teacher distribute any materials at this point or did those materials get distributed during the introduction? How does the teacher check for understanding? What are the students meant to be doing during the body of the lesson? This is the place that you would list the specific activities that they are being asked to undertake. Do the students need to move around anywhere to get to the activities that they've been asked to do? The conclusion of the lesson is the time when the learning is tied together. So again, what does the teacher actually do to tie the learning together? How does the teacher gain the students' attention at the conclusion of the lesson and bring them together? What do the students do at this point? Do they share what they have done and do they, are they asked to reflect on their learning? Does the teacher make explicit links back to the learning intention? at this point. Now here's another section that is often forgotten but it's the actual closure of a lesson. How is this done? Does the lesson just fizzle out and the kids go off to the next class or back to their desks or do they wander aimlessly around? What's the way that the teacher closes the lesson? Does the teacher make a clear transition to the next lesson? Does the teacher ask the students to complete their homework diaries? Uh, does the teacher anticipate what's coming in the next lesson, whether that's the next lesson straight after this in a primary classroom or the next time that the secondary teacher sees those students? What do the te students being asked to do in between times? So how is that closed off? They're the main uh, features of the lesson plan. There's one more that's really important and it's this one, differentiating the lesson for students with different abilities. As I said earlier, your role as a teacher is to move your students along a learning continuum from where they are to where they could be. The standards in the Osbell's curriculum give us a guide as to what our students should be achieving, but these are normalised standards. Your students, as I said before, may not be anywhere near the expected standard for their year level, or they may be way ahead of the standard. So you need to work out ways to differentiate your lesson to accommodate for different levels of learning ability. You may also need to accommodate for other forms of difference, for example, for disability or for the second language, English as alternative language speakers. So in this section of the lesson, I want you to, do, to try and work out and record how your mentor teacher has differentiated the lesson, or if they have, or if they haven't. Have they provided different levels of support for different students? What sort of supports are they? Are the students working on different activities? Are they working on different content? Are the processes that they're being asked to engage in different? Are the materials and resources that they're being used any different? So that's your task. You don't need to complete the reflection areas down the bottom here, but I'd like you to uh, sit through that lesson and record quite specific uh, actions taken by the teachers, actions taken by the students in the lesson and see how much of that lesson plan you can retrofit from what you have seen during the lesson or as the lesson progresses. A good idea, I think, is to then show your teacher what you've come up with and ask your mentor teacher to um, fill in any gaps that you might have or to answer questions and clarify what their intention was at various stages of the lesson. Good luck with this observation.